Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about diagonal seam tape. What is diagonal seam tape, you may be wondering. And if you aren't familiar with this product, it's one you're going to want to familiarize yourself with. So, this is what it looks like. It doesn't look like much. It's a lightweight washi type tape, but what it does is it eliminates the need to draw diagonal lines on any of the following type of units, half square triangles, flying geese, or anything that uses stitch and flip corners. So as you can imagine, this is a real time saver. Let me take you over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna show you just how handy this is. Over here at my sewing machine, you can see that I already have the diagonal seam tape applied to my sewing machine bed. The red line I have centered with my sewing machine needle, and then the black lines fall one quarter inch away from that center red line. Let me show you how we use this to make a flying geese unit. I have my pieces already cut here, one rectangle on the bottom and then one of the squares here on the top. The rectangle is cut at two and a half by four and a half and then the square is two and one half. I will go ahead and line everything up and prepare to sew this. This top point is going to be lined with, up with my sewing machine needle. The bottom point is lined up with that red line. Put our sewing machine foot down, we're ready to sew. Now what we'll do as we're sewing is just make sure we keep that bottom point lined right up with that red line. The whole way up through while we're sewing. We've got our line sewn, and then what we would do is just take this over to our iron, and we would press this down. Now, I always like to press everything, especially for this type of unit, before I trim out my bottom layers. That way, I can look at the back and make sure that I don't have any fabric from the top overhanging that back. We want this rectangle to be the same size as it was before we added this corner. So it was two and a half by four and one half, and we want that to still be exactly two and one half by four and one half. So I always press first, and then I come back and I trim out my quarter inch seam allowance. So after I trim out that quarter inch seam allowance, then I would come back, I would put my other square on this side, and I would sew it exactly the same way. When we're making um, like snowball units or stitch and flip corner units, we use the same red marking line. So I have one square here, this is a three and a half inch square, and I have a two inch square. And if we were making um, a stitch and flip corner or a snowball corner on one edge here, we would just line up our square just like we normally would, except we have not marked our diagonal line. We're gonna do this just the same way. I'll show you how this looks a second time. So I'm lining up that top point with my sewing machine needle. This bottom point we want lined right up with that red line, and then we're gonna be ready to sew. I often don't pin these, but if you prefer to pin these into place before you sew, by all means, go right ahead and do that. And then we would take this over to our iron and we would press this in place. And the same thing for this type of unit. I always like to press first, make sure everything is exactly perfect around those edges. And then after pressing, I trim out my quarter inch seam allowance. And then if you were adding stitch and flip corners to these others, you would do just the same as what I just showed you. Now, we can also use this tape to do half square triangles. Now, this time, we are going to be lining up with our black lines. So I am going to, I usually line up over here on this side, the black line on the right side, which lines up with my quarter inch up there on my sewing machine plate, and then the black line down here. So let's go ahead and get that set up. And this is going to cause you to sew a quarter inch away. You're actually, you can see where that red line is. That's actually going to be your sewing line. So that's going to cause you to sew a quarter inch away from the diagonal, which is exactly what we want when we're making half square triangles. So let's just go up through here. I'm just keeping this point this time. Oops. Keeping this point lined up with the black line there. When I, when I was talking, I wasn't keeping my hands on there. So you do want to make sure and guide that Keep that right on the black line as you're sewing. 
And then you're gonna take that out of there and flip it and do the same thing. So lining up again on this side. Now I have seen some people line up on this line too if they have better markings up here. So you can line up on either side. Just make sure you repeat it the same way. So we'll come up through and there you can see we have two lines. They are both one quarter inch away from that center. So we would trim that apart on the diagonal. And then you can see you're going to have two half square triangles. And we've done it without having to mark any of those diagonal lines. In conclusion, diagonal seam tape is a tool that I use all of the time. I use it in almost, I think I use it in all of the quilts that I piece actually. Anytime I need to draw those diagonal lines, I don't, and I just use the tape as my guide. With that being said, it's not going to work for everyone. I have taught classes before and I usually will suggest this product and have my class members try it out. And some people rave about it and love it, but it doesn't work for everybody. Some people feel like they just can't be as accurate as they wish that they could be when they're using the tape. So there might be a little bit of a learning curve. Um, and even when you apply it to your sewing machine bed, you might find that you need to adjust it just a little bit to the left or to the right to make sure that it's lined up just as you'd like it to be. Um, I love it and so I wanted to do this tutorial so you would have an idea how to utilize the tape and um, maybe it's something that you'll end up loving as well. So thank you so much for stopping by. Um, have a great day and I will catch you later.